Welcome to the Positosis Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Toledo, your host for the Positosis Podcast. Today is a very special day, very, very special day in my history. November 16th is a day that I will always remember. November 16th, 1981. Salina, Kansas. First game of my junior year in college. I was away in the Midwest playing playing basketball on a basketball scholarship. And we were playing the number one rated team in the whole United States. We were playing against Marymount University in the Bicentennial Hall. The Bicentennial Hall holds 16,000 people. My college was right down the street. We were 30 miles down the road. We were just a small college, and we weren't expected to do much. But Marymount, they were tough. Every single year, they were perennial powerhouses. They recruited nationwide. They got players from all over the United States. The McPherson College, Bull, the McPherson college Bulldogs. Yo, here we come. We go to the Bicentennial Hall. It was the first game of my junior year in college. It was my first game for that college. I played two years of community college at Pima Community College in Tucson, Arizona, where we had an excellent, excellent team. And so I was recruited, and I ended up playing ball in the Midwest. This is my first game. This is my coming out party against Marymount University. And when I first arrived on campus, when I first arrived, when I was being recruited to go to this college, That was a selling point. The selling point to me was like, hey, Chris, if you come to our place, you're going to get a lot of exposure. As a matter of fact, the first game, the very first game of the year is against the number one team in the nation. And when you're playing the number one team in the nation, you get a lot of attention. There's a lot of pro scouts that are there. There's people that come from all over the place to watch the best team in the nation play. And most people thought they were that the number one team in the nation was going to smash us, that they were going to come in just like they did to everybody else and just destroy us. But little did they know, though. Whew, hey, folks, my game was on point. My game was on point. So the game started, and I could just tell. I could just tell. I could tell that was my night. Everything felt right. I had a little little pep in my step. I just felt it. Positosis players that are tuning in, you all have had those days. Whether it's on the basketball court or it's in your job or whatever activity it is that you do, you know those times. Like you just are in the groove if you're a singer, if you're a dancer or if you're a manager, whatever, but you just have those times where just things are just clicking. Everything is just coming together. The timing is just right on point. You're feeling great. Everything that you do is the right move. I'm telling you, that is how I felt. So the first half, we were hanging in there. We were hanging in there, and I was leading the charge. I had this confidence My game was nice. My game was super, super nice. And so we hung in there. The game, we were going back and forth. We were going back and forth. A pretty high-paced game. But we weren't, uh, sometimes we were up by a basket. Sometimes we were down by a couple baskets. But we were neck and neck through the first half. And my teammates and our coaches, they were all just shocked. They They were just shocked. They couldn't even believe. And they thought that we had got the victory by at halftime it being a tie game. But what was really happening, though, is we were gaining confidence. And my game was feeling so good. They were feeding off how I was playing, and I was getting loose. I was getting loose, funky, and free. And in my mind, I'm going, this is my breakout moment. Like all those years of practicing, of really working on my game since I was just a little kid, it was all coming together in this one game, in this one moment. And it felt to me... It felt to me like it was like the biggest blessing that was being given to me. It just felt like, man, it just felt like I'd done a bunch of stuff right and I was just being rewarded 
in that game. I could just feel it. It was almost an out-of-body experience. And the cool part about it, too, was even though we were away and we were playing on their court in their city, like the home team, the home crowd, they were feeling my vibe, too. They saw me blunt, you know, they, they saw me ball. They saw my love for the game. They saw my skill for the game. So we even had a lot of support from the home team. We were going back and forth. We were going back and forth. Gets down to six minutes to go in the game, and the game is still tied. And I'm like thinking, like I didn't think it was a pipe dream that we could win the game. Like I'm thinking, we're going we're gonna to get this one. We're going to get it. Boom, we're going on a fast break. I'm dribbling the ball, getting loose. I'm shaking and baking. I pull up from the three-point line, raise up for that beautiful jumper, and I whap! Nothing but net. Man, whew, yeah. I could just feel it. It was just like my skin. I was, I was giving these goosebumps. I was just feeling it. I was completely, 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 completely submerged in the flow. A couple, a couple plays later, once again, we're on a fast break. And for those that don't know basketball, a fast break is when you have the ball and you're running fast towards, towards your basket. And, it's a little, and, and, and the game is starting to speed up a little bit. So we were on a fast break. And I step up to about the three-point line. And, I, and it looked to, the, to my opponent like I was going to stop like I did just a few minutes ago and pull up for a nice jump shot and bust that jumper in their eye again. And so everybody turned around, including all their big men. They turned around to look at the basket to see what, to, to get what's called the rebound in case I missed the ball. Well, I noticed, I noticed that everybody turned around and I still had my dribble alive. And so I thought, ooh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the hoop. Everybody's turned around. I'm gonna dunk right over the top of their heads. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I am five foot eight on a good day, and, I, and and especially in those days, I had some spring in my legs, and I was gonna dunk on these six foot eight dudes. Well, first of all, they weren't looking; they were looking the other way. So I was like, "I'm gonna sneak one on them. I'm gonna get it." And I was, and I had so much energy. I know that I could get the height to dunk on them. I knew it, and so I took a couple dribbles, took a couple real hard dribbles, and I gathered all my strength. And I jumped better off of two feet, off of both feet than instead of one. I jumped off of two feet and I was airborne and I was ready to mash it on their heads. <laughs> Here's where the problem came in. Unbeknownst to me, over my back left shoulder, I did not see him out of my lap, my back left shoulder. They had their guy, his name, I'll never forget his name, his name, his name was Mike Davert. Six foot seven, 240 pounds. I didn't see him right off my left shoulder. Mike played on their other team. And just at the moment that I elevated to the best of my ability, just at the same time, Mike also went up from behind me to block my shot. And we got tangled up in midair. So I'm about five foot eight, folks. And in those days, maybe 140 pounds. Maybe. Maybe. On a chunky day, I was 140 pounds. So we got a five foot eight guy, 140 pound guy. And we have a six foot seven, two hundred and forty pound guy, hundred pound difference, almost a, a close to a, f- a foot difference. To the guy was massive, so we got tangled up in the air. Uh, I ended up falling and I fell backwards, and I was um, I, I landed on my butt and I was scooting out of the way. He got turned around the air, so his big old butt was coming straight down at me, and I'm putting my hands on the ground. And I'm trying to scooch you away so he didn't land on me. And as I was trying to scooch you away, I had my left foot extended, and his whole 240 pounds landed right on my left leg. Right on my left leg. Completely broke the tibia and fibula, completely in half of my left leg. God, it was the trippiest feeling. Like, when you hear the story... It seems like it would make sense for you for someone to think, "Whoa, man, that must have really, really hurt." But in that moment, what I remember most, though, was not really the hurt. I remember most; it just seemed like it was kind of hard to breathe. Like it just felt like I was I was having a hard time breathing. It wasn't really I didn't really feel the pain. 
just felt like it was just like like I was having to really focus on breathing. I think I was in shock. And the, we were right at right next to their cheerleaders. And so it was really kind of nasty. You could the bone had came out of the bone. The the bone had come through the skin. Their cheerleaders right there. And when I started to know that things really weren't right is when the cheerleaders started screaming. And then I felt my heart racing really, really fast. And and then I could then I started feeling I started feeling I started feeling the impact of what had just happened. But it was like really weird. Like the the concept of time in those moments was like it was completely warped. Like it just felt like in, in, in a lot of ways, it just felt like a lot of stuff slowed down. And it just, it, it felt like a very reflective moment. It wasn't even a bad moment, but it just felt like very reflective. And so they drove, it was this huge arena. And so they drove the ambulance right there, right next to the court. And they put the thing around my ankle. They, put some air thing around my ankle so it wouldn't move, and they put me in the back of this ambulance and whisked me off to the hospital. And, man, I have to say, every single little bump in the road, like, I felt, I, then, you know, a little bit of pain started coming in, and I really, really, really felt it all the way to the hospital. They drove me to the hospital, and, you know, my parents were back in Arizona, and they were they had been waiting, you know, they asked me to please call them as soon as the game was over to tell them how it went, and, I just remember, you know, this is even before cell phones, and you know, I said, "Hey, you know, before you take me in there to get the surgery, you know, like let me just call my folks real quick." And I just remember being super calm, and you know, calling and, "Hey, you know, mom and dad, yeah, how'd it go? How did the game go? Well, you know, it, was, it actually went really, really good. It went super good. We were playing really nice, um, but there was a little accident. I had, had a little injury, and." Uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I have to deal with a little energy. Well, what happened? Whew, well, we don't really know yet, but I'll find out here pretty soon. Um, but I'm in the hospital. You're in the what? Yep, I'm in the hospital, and they're getting ready to operate. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Chris will be on the next plane. Nope, don't, please don't come. Please don't come. This is something that I need to deal with. And so I had a surgery, and they inserted five screws in two, uh, in a plate, and Five screws, a metal plate, and these two rods that are actually still on my ankle to this day. And so I, and this happened over Thanksgiving. It was over, it was right before Thanksgiving. And, um, you know, I just remember when I was laying there in the hospital, I don't know, it, it was such a surreal, surreal experience. I knew that I was done for the year, for that year. I, I just knew it. Ah, uh, but Mike Davert, you know, him and his girlfriend, they came to the hospital and they were bringing me burgers and, you know, he felt super bad. And, you know, of course it wasn't anything, it wasn't anything intentional, but I don't know. It was, it was such a pivotal moment in my life. Like as I reflect back now, I'm thinking if, if instead of going there and try to dunk on somebody's head, like if I would have just made that decision to stop and shoot the shot, none of this would have happened. And I got to say, like, I mean, once again, you know, sometimes um, we all have an exaggerated sense of self of how good we play something or how valuable we are. But in my opinion, my skills were completely, completely on course to make it to the NBA. Um, I was four of the five guys that played for Marymount University that we played against that night ended up playing in the NBA. And I'm telling you, I was using and abusing these boys before this happened, holding my own. And so, you know, in this reflection, like, hey, if I would have just stopped and shot the jumper, maybe I would still be on track to get to the NBA. But you know what, though? The decision to go for it, the decision to, that was my moment. Like, I knew that I was supposed to try to dunk on these dudes. I might not ever get that chance again to do that. Yeah, it's a big risky moment, and 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 the reward was a broken tibia and fibula. But I think that really set the tone for me. Like I just feel like that moment, that decision, and that moment to just go for it. Like I felt it. Like I was. Such